Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. San Antonio firefighters battled fire and smoke this afternoon at a northeast side gas station. More than 20 fire units responded to the 5000 block of Randolph Boulevard at Crestway Drive. Our Alyssa Cole is at the scene right now as firefighters make sure no hot spots pop up. Alyssa, have they told you what caused the fire? Well, Courtney, there's no worry yet. Fire investigators are still working to find out what caused this fire here at this Shell gas station. Now, we want to point out there's no threat with the surrounding businesses or homes near the gas station. And as you can see, there's not too much around this building itself. And this is, you know, why people don't have to worry about anything. But let's tell you what we know. So the fire started in the back area of the building while the store was open. Crews have been out here for hours since about 1 45 and the reason being is because of what was inside the store courtney now the gas station had a kitchen or area where food is made and there was some flammable materials including cooking grease there not to mention the electrical wiring that could have possibly been an issue as well we did get a chance to speak with the battalion chief on the scene and he says the most challenging part of putting out this fire was working around the framework of the building Roofs are designed to keep rain and water off, and this one collapsed downward, so we're basically putting water and it's just, the roof's doing its job. So we have to actually get inside and kind of tear back a little things. Yes, Courtney, now there was some good news. No one was hurt and there was no fatalities. And the battalion chief also mentioned no one was arrested in connection to this incident. Now, the battalion chief says it also could be a while before they found out, find out what caused this fire. But it is safe for people to know in this area there is no threat at all. So that's something that you all can know there at home. And there's nothing to worry about for this fire. Alyssa Cole, KSEC 12 News. Good information there, Alyssa. Thank you so much. Well, only hours into the new year, tragedy on the highway, a car bursting into flames. San Antonio police say the driver crashed into a concrete pillar. This was the scene in the 8200 block of I-35 around 430. Officers say when they got there, the car was fully engulfed in flames. They tell us it appears the car crossed over three lanes before driving off the highway and slamming into the pillar at the on-ramp. Investigators say the fire was so large, they don't know how many people may have been in that vehicle. No other car was involved in this crash. A family is looking for a new place to live this New Year's Day after their home was destroyed by a fire. Investigators believe fireworks could possibly be to blame. It happened last night around 2.30. San Antonio firefighters say the flames spewed from the two-story home on Pebble Bow near Thousand Oaks Drive. The two people inside thankfully got out safely. Firefighters were forced to work defensively, though, when the home collapsed. There were no reports of any injuries. Police say a 31 year old man ended 2022 in jail for allegedly shooting at an officer. SAPD was called out to Rose Valley near Miller's Pond on the southwest side around 11 p.m. for a family disturbance that involved a gun. According to police, the man fired several shots at an officer who was approaching him. That officer was not hit, but the suspect ran behind a house and into a wooded area. SAPD's Eagle helicopter was called in as officers searched for that suspect. They eventually found and arrested him. So so far, though, no word on any charges. New at 5 o'clock, 530 rather, a new year means new leadership in Bear County. Peter Sakai was sworn in as county judge earlier today. For some added luck, he starts his term in office. The San Antonio Lion Dance Association performs the Chinese Lion Dance. The former district court judge was elected in November. Sakai reaffirming today that effective changes will lie in the ability for elected officials to collaborate and listen to different perspectives from both their colleagues and the public. And I'm confident that our county commissioners, with my message, that we're going to work together and start tackling on the problems and finding solutions with common ground. Sakai takes over for Nelson Wolf, who served as Bear County judge for more than 20 years. Wolf chose not to run for re-election. Well, a young man killed by a wrong way driver is now being honored in a big way for being an organ donor. As John Paul Barajas reports, Asante Contreras' life and dreams may have been cut short, but his mission to save others is still being accomplished. For some, sirens might be alarming, but to Asante Contreras, they were a calling. It started at a young age. He pounded his chest and shouted, those are my people, and it taught me to hear a siren. 
The 20-year-old's dreams of becoming an emergency physician were cut short two years ago when he was hit and killed by a wrong-way driver running from police. But as an organ donor, Asante has saved lives. I'm happy that in his own way he's able to share about organ donation and it'll bring awareness to people. So in a way, his legacy now will go on. This week, Asante and 43 other donors will be honored on the Donate Life float in the Rose Parade ahead of the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. <laughs> Family and friends came together to put finishing touches on a picture-perfect photograph of Asante. His girlfriend, too, she's like, oh, his smile is just perfect. This will be put on a float come game day. It's for a good cause. It's helping people. And that's that was so important to him. So he would like that. He would be thrilled. For those in attendance, the pain of not having Asante was visible. Trusting him to listen or to love or to laugh with. And I think I just miss that safety the most. But the memories they cherish put smiles on their faces. He was always the goofy one. I uh, remember when he would do that dance, the worm. Oh, uh, yeah. And he would do those goofy poses with his arm and his tongue uh, out. Yeah. Oh, I miss you. That's it. The Contreras family has been flown out to California so they can be front and center at the Rose Parade. We'll be airing the Rose Parade right here on KSAT tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Chapo Barajas, KSAT 12 News. The attack on three New York City police officers is being investigated as a possible case of terrorism. That's according to law enforcement sources speaking to ABC News. Those officers are recovering today, as is the 19-year-old suspect. ABC's M. Wynn explains what investigators are learning about his past. Three NYPD police officers were attacked with a machete late Saturday as they patrolled an area just outside the security perimeter set up for the New Year's Eve celebrations in Times Square. A 19-year-old male approached an officer and attempted to strike him over the head with a machete. The male then struck two additional officers in the head with a machete. Authorities say the three officers are in stable condition. One of them, an eight-year veteran, suffered a laceration to the head. A second officer was admitted to the hospital with a skull fracture and a large laceration. He was on his first assignment after graduating from the academy on Friday. Law enforcement sources have identified the suspect as 19-year-old Trevor Bickford of Wells, Maine. They say he had no prior arrests, but the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force had looked into the suspect after he was reported by concerned relatives. He's being treated for his injuries after investigators say he was shot in the shoulder by police. And these officers responded in an admirable, professional manner and all the officers involved. And I must say that even after the incident took place, uh, the responding officers uh, made sure the scene was under control. Law enforcement is now looking through his online postings that preliminarily indicate recent extremist Islamic radicalization. While the suspect's motives remain unclear, authorities say they have not ruled out that he came to New York specifically to attack police officers. Federal and local investigators stressed this appears to be an isolated incident and there is no larger threat. M1, ABC News, Washington. Still ahead, while we were ringing in the new year, this couple was welcoming a new baby. You'll meet San Antonio's first baby of 2023 after this. All right, it's time to meet one of San Antonio's newest and tiniest residents, baby, the first baby of the new year. Avery Rose Jacks made her debut just two seconds after midnight at North Central Baptist. That makes her the city's first baby of 2023. She missed Christmas by a week, but she will bring home quite a haul of gifts with her. This year marks the 23rd year that the local hospitals have donated gifts for baby new year, including a car seat and portable crib. And she is absolutely adorable. So congratulations to that family. Family. Absolutely, that is so exciting. She's so cute. She was precious. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's take a look outside here with live cam this Sunday evening. Had some high clouds that have been streaming across portions of South Central Texas this afternoon, all after we saw some areas of fog out there earlier this morning. Briefly looking at conditions outside, temperatures are still in the 70s for a good portion of the area, but we will continue to see those temperatures fall through the evening hours, waking up tomorrow in the mid 60s, but some patchy fog is possible yet again. We'll have those details after the break. 
All right, after finding a little bit of sun out there earlier this afternoon, we're seeing increasing humidity levels this evening. That's going to continue through the overnight hours as well, which means waking up tomorrow morning. Some areas of fog and drizzle are expected across portions of South Central Texas, but we will see some of that break up by late morning, leading to some more sunshine as we head into our Monday afternoon, Tuesday and Wednesday. Lower humidity thanks to a cool front that's going to move in tomorrow night. Still highs warmer than average as we head into the first half of the first week of 2023, but a reinforcing push of some cooler air arrives for the second half of the week, allowing highs to then drop into the 60s. So we're going to talk all about what we're expecting over the next several days here in San Antonio. But first, a look at air quality outside because of the fireworks that we saw last night. This morning, we actually had unhealthy air quality levels here in town, but the good news is we have have seen that improve just a little bit here heading into this Sunday evening now in the moderate category, but maybe you also woke up this morning with some itchy eyes or a stuffy nose that likely thanks to a very high pollen count in terms of our mountain cedar levels this first day of the new year as well. The highest that we've seen so far this season. Now we'll watch what that count is tomorrow, but with that front moving in tomorrow night, wouldn't be surprised if we still have some elevated mountain cedar levels in place into our Tuesday. So of course we will continue to keep eyes on that. A look at current temperatures outside here this 5 p.m. hour in and around the San Antonio area. 77 over at the airport, 75 in Bull Verde, 78 in Seguin, and 77 over in Hondo in Medina County. Talking about those increasing humidity levels, you can see as we take a look at the change in dew points right now compared to where we were this time yesterday, about 15 to even 20 degrees higher which essentially just means that mugginess is returning. Again, we did find some fog out there earlier this morning, some of which was pretty dense in spots, limiting visibility. We are expecting some of that again as we head into the overnight hours tonight and early tomorrow morning. And you can see here on our future cast, we also do have the potential to find some pockets of drizzle out there as well. So if you are planning on hitting the roads first thing tomorrow morning, maybe plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time out the door and just be careful out there on those area roadways as well. Into the afternoon, we should see some of that low level cloud cover break up, leading way to more peaks of sunshine. Maybe an isolated shower or two possible from the Carn City to Gonzales line points east in our far eastern counties through the afternoon before the bulk of that activity then moves out of our area closer to the Houston and Brazos Valley areas. Starting off tomorrow morning, temperature wise, we're in the 60s in and in around San Antonio. We will start to see those temperatures temperatures climb into the 70s around the lunchtime hour, especially after we see some of that low level cloud cover break up. And then those afternoon highs are headed for once again, the upper 70s and even a few low 80s. Another warmer than average day as we head into our Monday. But again, we are expecting that front to move in Monday night, maybe an isolated shower possible into the early morning hours of our Tuesday southeast of town. Temperature still in the 70s, but Courtney, another reinforcing push of cooler air arrives, sending those afternoon highs into the 60s Thursday and Friday. Good news. I'm already sweating in 2023. It's <laughs> yes. unacceptable. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. All right, Larry, we know the Dallas fans are excited about the Saints Eagles game. Yeah, Dallas fans rooting for the Saints today, and they got their wish because New Orleans beat Philadelphia, helping out Dallas because the Cowboys, well, they can still win the NFC East. And the CFP National Championship is all set. Coming up. For us to, to battle back and, and kind of, you know, avenge that loss and be able to win this one tonight against a great opponent and, you know, have the opportunity to go play, play for a national championship, I think just means so much to, you know, the guys up here, guys in the locker room, our coaching staff, our fans, our university. So I think that's kind of the, you know, the biggest thing. Max Duggan and the Horn Frogs were bummed out after losing the Big 12 championship game, but they're feeling much better after beating Michigan yesterday in big board sports. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Thanks to the Eagles losing today, the Dallas Cowboys still have a shot to win the NFC East. Philly hosting the Saints this afternoon. Gardner Minshew playing for the injured Jalen Hurts. Third quarter, Minshew finds A.J. Brown, who catches the ball. He cuts to his left and races his way in for a 78-yard touchdown. The Eagles trail 13-10, heading into the fourth quarter. Now the Saints seal the deal right here. 
Uh, Marshawn Lattimore intercepts Minshew for an easy pick six, 12 yard return with 530 to go and the Saints win 20 to 10, denying the Eagles the number one seed in the NFC. So if Philly loses to the Giants and the boys beat the Commanders next week, then Dallas will take the NFC East. Take you to Houston now where Jacksonville hammered the Texans this afternoon. Second quarter, Jags running back Travis Etienne takes the handoff, breaks the tackle, and he's off to the races. 62 yard touchdown and Jacksonville leads 14 to nothing. He had nine carries for 108 yards. Later in the quarter, Davis Mills back to pass, fumbles the ball. Players diving for it when Tyson Campbell scoops and scores. A 12-yard fumble return. Jacksonville was never threatened in this one. They win it 31-3 to end a nine-game skid to the Texans. And how about this? Houston didn't win a home game for the first time in franchise history. I mean, we played against a really good team. I thought they outcompeted us throughout the game, just uh, struggled to find ways to execute. Um, our job, so it made it tough to tough to move the football. And I mean, props to them; they're a good team. Houston will wrap up their season next Sunday at Indianapolis. Turning on college football, number one Georgia rallied to beat number four Ohio State in the CFP semifinals last night. Less than a minute left in the first half, Buckeyes quarterback C.J. Stroud with plenty of time to throw. He goes over the top to Xavier Johnson, who spins to make the catch and spins again into the end zone, 37 yards. And Ohio State led at halftime, 28-24. They led 38-24 after three quarters, and the Dogs came back. Less than a minute left in the fourth, quarterback Stetson Bennett finds A.D. Mitchell in the end zone. 10 yard touchdown and Georgia takes the lead 42 41 next drive Ohio State will march right down the field then on fourth and 11 Noah Ruggles attempts a 50 yard field goal for the win and it was no good from the get go number one Georgia is moving on after edging out Ohio State 42 to 41. Our guys are extremely resilient we talked halftime about some games we've been in this year we've been behind in including the Missouri game and um, I had no doubt that our team would come out fighting um, did not play our best football game a lot of that had to do with Ohio State um, I have a lot of respect for them I have a lot of respect for these players that are on this podium with me and the ones in the locker room and if we want any chance of winning a national championship we have to play a lot better football than we played tonight in the other CFP semifinal, number three TCU led number two Michigan from start to finish, advancing to the national championship 51 to 45. TCU intercepted Wolverines quarterback J.J. McCarthy twice, returning both of them for touchdowns. Max Duggan passed for 225 yards and two touchdowns and two interceptions. And the Horn Frogs outrushed to Michigan 263 yards to 186. TCU rode their underdog status, become the first Big 12 team to reach the title game in the CFP era. It was a hard-fought game. I thought both teams really played hard. Really proud of these guys. We talked about all week leading up to the game how important it was going to be to play physical. And I thought we were definitely the most physical team on the field tonight. Um, you know, our ability to run the ball, we almost outrushed Michigan for 100 yards. Our ability to stop the run, I think, was a difference in the ball game. Uh, obviously made some big plays defensively, scored two touchdowns. Number three, TCU will face number one, Georgia, Monday, January 9th at 6.30 p.m. at SoFi Stadium for the national championship. And Georgia is favored by 13 and a half points. The Spurs lost to the Mavericks last night, 126 to 125. The Spurs trailed by 17 points in the third quarter, and then they fought back to make it close. Luka Doncic scored a game-high 51 points to go with six rebounds and nine assists. That's his third 50-point game in his last five outings. Dude's unreal. Kelvin Johnson led the Spurs with 30 points, his second straight 30-point performance. Jeremy Sohan was next with 20 points, all while guarding Luka a lot. Of course, it's you know hard to stop a guy like that, but I think it's just you know being physical with him, uh, getting him a little into irritated. Um, but yeah, it's tough. It's tough. We had a, a good team effort uh, and an individual effort on him, but you know uh, he's an amazing player. Uh, his IQ is just off the charts. Uh, so we're you know we're we'd rather win than lose, like anybody else in the world, but. Uh, Really proud of their effort and the way they just kept going. Even when we got down, whatever it was, 13, 14, can't remember. Spurs will tip off the new year tomorrow night, 6.30 at Brooklyn. The Nets have won 11 games in a row. And I'll tell you what, Luka Doncic certainly playing like an MVP right now, Courtney. Yeah, no kidding. And just coming in one point of him, I think, was pretty impressive. It was. Yeah. All right, thanks, Larry. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. All right, once we see the cloud cover build back in tonight, temperatures likely won't fluctuate a whole lot through the overnight hours, starting off in the 60s. Highs near about 80 tomorrow with some patchy fog and drizzle in the morning. And then we'll see more sunshine by the middle to later portions of the week. Courtney, after those few fronts move through.
We need that rain, so hopefully it's coming to us. Thank you so much, Mia. That's all our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here tonight on The Night Beat. We'll see you then.